Kelvin is an active NFL player by day and a businessman by night with a focus on making a positive impact. He's a man of strong faith and passionate about battling hunger and trying to expand access to education. He's the first ever four-time NFLPA community MVP winner. He's nominated for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award twice and in 2018 was named among Forbes 30 Under 30. He's been very active in the investment community since 2020. In this interview, Kevin explains the game of building connections, nurturing relationships, and strategically positioning himself in the world of business. Welcome to Playing Business. I'm Deshaun Kaiser. And I'm Dan Gardner. We well, appreciate you hopping on, man. We, we were just obviously catching up a little bit. How, how's it been in France? I, obviously, you're, you're kind of a vet here. This is year two for you. It's my first time out. How's it been? Year two. Wouldn't consider myself a vet by any means. Okay, okay. Uh, but excited to be here. Uh, it's cool to to be here and kind of remember what I were, where I was at last year and, and kind of walk some of the same paths as last year and kind of figure things out on the run. Uh, but just landed a couple of hours ago and uh, excited to, to hit the ground running. Perfect, perfect. Well, let's just dive right in. You know, as I, this whole this whole podcast, as I was mentioning, has all been around my experience uh, within the league and, and, you know, doing kind of the professional athlete lifestyle where there's these conversations that you have with, with, uh, with some of the people who are, who are around us this is at a higher level. There's a lot of people out there who, you know, claim to be business folk, but they're really just, you know, brands and influencers and, you know, throwing throwing a quick Shopify site up. And there's other people who really take it seriously. Um, in that, your name has come up over and over and over and over again. Why is that? Probably because I do it behind the scenes. Um, you know, it's not something that I think needs to be talked about on social media. I think the ability to be able to do it behind closed doors and do it within boardrooms gives it even more influence. Um, and I think the people at the end of the day that really drive the value, make the decisions, are the people that are in the boardrooms. And most of those people don't have social media, don't have Instagram, don't tweet, rarely are on LinkedIn, but they really move and shake and really drive the innovation that's happening in the industry. They drive the, the decision-making that's happening in the industry they are a part of the conversation when things shift within the industry. And I think spending time with those types of folks are really what drives the value and allows me to be in rooms that, you know, I guess people talk about it, but it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's just, I enjoy being behind the scenes and behind the scenes has, has helped me get into rooms that football opened the door, but those folks in those rooms really kicked the door and, and provided a seat for me at the table. What, what rooms are you trying to get in? You know, I, I saw that uh, you just on your crunch base from from your investment profile. Mm -hmm. Looks like there's a lot of tech that kind of started coming out of COVID. You know, what, what, are, what are you interested in when it comes to business? I mean, this has been, you know, almost a decade in, in the works. You know, which, what's on crunch base is just what people are allowed to see. Uh, but what's behind the scenes is really what um, I really care most about. It's, it's the relationships. It's the relationships with, with firms. It's the relationships with founders. It's the relationships with CEOs and CCOs and CMOs and CTOs and CIOs. Like it's literally spending time in that C-suite and spending time with some of the innovators within the founder community. Um, and tech happens to be one of those areas uh, where I get a lot of energy and I get a lot of value, but there are also other passion areas where I get to spend time diving into art. You know, when I come to, to Cairns, I'm gonna go see some museums while I'm here. Um, you know, if I were in Texas, I would go and go to a, to a barnyard and go and see what, what's going on with the cattle. So I, I have my own passion areas within different walks of my life, and I'm able to really find out who are the experts and who are the most influential people within those industries and build a real genuine relationship with them. And wherever it goes, that's where it goes. But it's not about what am I out to get or what room I'm trying to get in. It's really about the relationships with individuals um, and making sure that it's, it's uh, reciprocal. So, you know, do they want to spend time with me? Do they, do they care about my family? Do I care about their family? And if it's real, authentic, genuine relationships on both sides of the spectrum, there is, it's not something that somebody is trying to get out of it or it's not a particular room you're trying to get out of it. It's something that's, that happened very organically. When you happen to be in town, hey, hit me up. When I happen to be in your city, hit me up. So it's, it's, it's very organic and it happens over time. It's compounding. And it's so funny, I was coming into town and a, and a guy sent me a book called The Joy of Compounding. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but it's similar to the conversation that um, the book, uh, The Psychology of Money, and just talking about things in a much different fashion and wrapping it in a different type of context, but the, the joy of compounding, but it's compounding of relationships. It's social capital. Instead of social media, it's social capital. Um, it's social currency, and that's compounding over time due to the ability to really invest in those relationships. Do you think, or do you, do you consciously think about, you know, so, some celebrities or celebrity athletes think about, 
you know, distribution of their following as the value. But it seems like what you're saying is it's the compounding of relationships that is really the true value that sits under it. So are you consciously thinking about that from a like a day-to-day -day business perspective? Without question. I mean, without question. I mean, I look at, I mean, even take cans for instance. If there was anybody that I either have known or have connectivity to, I reached out to them. You know, folks that used to either work at the NFL office, you know, athletes who I know are going to be in town, um, brands that I've, that I've known and, and hadn't had the opportunity to have face-to-face -face contact with. It's being able to, 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 to make a call and be able to have that relationship that really drives the conversation that happened here. Now, again, I have no idea what will happen from it, but it's the connectivity to be able to have direct human connection with another individual. And you have that with social. Social, you know, for me, social is a way to be able to 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 share kind of what I'm up to, not so much the ability to to drive um, intrinsic value and human connection. So I think it's, it it just serves two different purposes. Um, social media is there to to be able to highlight things, but at the end of the day, it's me texting a picture of my family to you know one of my mentors or or, or one of you know, one of the GPs there in San Francisco. And for me, that value and the value that him and his wife get out of seeing that picture is way more valuable than what or how many likes or how many comments that I get on Instagram or, or, or Twitter or LinkedIn or things of that nature. Where, where do you think this understanding from business came from? And, and maybe as a follow up, when did it start? You know, small. I mean, Mejia, I, I don't. I don't think that that's a, that's not a, a that's not the Silicon Valley <laughs> by any means. So where where did this come from? Obviously, you, you study finance in, in yeah. college. You yeah. know, where, where does it start? You know, I think it's it's one. is human again. I go back to human connection. You know, in, in the country where I'm from, it's a handshake. It's you know going for a walk. It's sitting at a diner. Um, a very simple way of American life in in, in some shape, form, or fashion. Um, and then I got to SMU, and you realize, wow. I mean. People's names on the building. Maseratis are here. I've never seen a Maserati when I when I got to SMU. I'd never seen a, a Lambo or you know any of these fancy European cars when I got to SMU. I'm like, you know, where did this come from? So it, it started this curiosity. And as I spent more time at SMU, you realize, well, how did people acquire their wealth? How did people become influential? Where did their success come from? And you start studying what they did. And I think I took that same type of curiosity and I took that into the National Football League. All right, well. How is this person rising in the ranks at the at the league office or at the NFLPA or you know they were you know an intern at at um, at PNG you know now they're a, a senior executive at PNG I mean there's a movie that just came out about a young man who was a a, a janitor uh, at Frito Lay and over a number of years you know turned the the, the Fritos into hot Fritos and Cheetos into hot Cheetos and he was a 42 uh, 42 year exec you know, at, at Frito-Lay because of, of the innovation that he that he started with. But it's it goes back to that human connection and being able to spend time and genuine time with people. And I think for me, when it really, I think, kind of tilted was when I blew my knee out in 2015 um, and had a little bit more time to think, even though I had my undergrad at, at SME and my, my master's, it was that injury that really put things more into perspective. You have to find something to do that you're really passionate about. And I was kind of you know, oil and gas was big in Texas. So I studied oil and gas with Chevron there in Pittsburgh. You know, real estate was big in Texas. So study real estate with folks in Texas and folks in Pittsburgh. But it wasn't until that injury where it caused me to really think about life differently. Got exposed to the, to, to Silicon Valley with the Super Bowl happening out there in, in, in San Francisco that year. Um, got to hear about from from athletes and how celebrities and entertainers and athletes were starting to come out there and spend some time. And uh, I was like, if they can do this stuff, you know, I can do it. And it's just that level of curiosity that, that continued to just boil over over time and just kind of bled into other, other industries. It's been a journey ever since. So, tw so 2015 happens, obviously. You, you, then you, you get into the league, and now you're in this locker room in which I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to project my feelings, and you tell me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, I played my best ball when I had something going on when it came to an investment or a startup in college. I started three different businesses in college with a couple of buddies in college. That's when I played my best because I got off the field and I was able to really let go, but let go in something that was still mentally challenging me. You know, it's like the same, you know, people play a lot of chess, you know, or, or bridge because of the, the strategy that comes alongside that, which ultimately makes you better, you know, uh, at what, you know, you consider to be your main thing. Got to the league and it was not that. It was the exact opposite. You know, I was a rookie quarterback, and quarterback is obviously a different position where the expectation is, you know, pretty high to, 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 to one, lead a locker room, and, but then two, obviously understand a very difficult playbook. 
But for me, I quickly got told that in order to be great, you got to be all ball. So I, I, I made a decision my rookie year to eliminate everything I had going on from, from, from business. I even got rid of all my charity things I was doing off the field just so I could make sure I had enough time to, to try to, you know, get us from 0-8 to 2-10, to, to you know. So that was my goal. So I'm curious, with, with your mindset now, like, do you feel that same kind of tension when it comes to showing up to the locker room and thinking about business? That, that tension is always going to be there. Um, I think your position, it holds a different type of value within the locker room, and I can understand um, the dynamics that you are going through. But I would say early on in my career, it took me time to get to the point where I, I would even talk about business within the locker room. Because you got to make a team, you got to make a squad, you got to make a roster, you got to make a name for yourself. Um, the thing that I didn't do is I didn't push all those things aside. I tried to find a way to separate them to an extent. Where when I was outside the locker room, I was outside the locker room. I was a dad, I was a husband. I did the things philanthropically that I wanted to do. Um, when I was in the locker room, I was in the locker room. So I tried to find that balance of being able to separate the two and not allow the two to bleed into each other, especially early on in my career. Because that is something that people and coaches and GMs and people look at. And if you're not good at hiding it, people will start to think, are, are you really serious about football? Do you love the game? Are you really into it? Uh, do you really love everything that comes with it? Do you love uh, the things that you get from it versus the actual game itself. You know, they want you to be a purist to an extent, but not really interested in the human element. Again, the human connection that's involved in the game as well. So how do you think about mentorship? You know, you're around like coaches and all, you know, even, even in college, you know, professors, but they're sending down a specific type path, as, as you mentioned. Oh, you got to be all in, in in football. So how do you think about men mentorship and leadership that shapes who you are and how you're thinking about beyond that today? Well, the thing is, I was blessed. I had really great coaches in college. June Jones, um, you know, kind of quarterback guru that, that had Hawaii and SMU playing really well during their heyday. And then I had a guy by the name of Adrian Clem, uh, who I consider almost like my older brother. Played in the league for about nine years, won three Super Bowls with the New England Patriots. Um, regretted not getting his degree when he left uh, Hawaii and went to the league. So everything that he taught me, it was things that he learned from his journey in the National Football League. Kelvin, I want you to be a violent individual on the field. But off the field, you need to be a dad. You need to be a husband. You need to think about your life holistically. And he always talked about this, this combination of Dr. Dr. Jekyll you know, Mr. Hyde, you have to be able to cut the switch on and cut the switch off. And I had people in my life that taught me how to do that early on. Hey, can you be a violent individual on the football field and move men, which is what you have to do for a living, but can you come off the field and be able to have a conversation with individuals? And both June Jones and Adrian Clem were very prolific in making sure that the human element and the human development was something that, you know, you were into. Like, I didn't get into reading like seriously reading. I mean, you read for school, but leisurely reading, I didn't get into that until I met Adrian Clem. The first book he gave me was this book called Tuesdays with Mari um, by Mitch Album, which is a phenomenal book that just talks about the quality of life and just thinking about life and time and, and how inevitable dying is to, to everybody. And him investing in me in that regard is, is something that I don't take for granted, but something that I truly appreciate because that mentorship and that leadership started to mold me and give me the ability to do what I do today is being able to understand the dynamics of how do you toe the line with being extremely serious about football, but also being extremely serious about the life after football and knowing that that opportunity and that time is all going to come for anybody that plays the game. So, so right now, what does that balance look like? You know, you, you, uh, I think I saw a quote, maybe it was a couple years back where it was like six days of ball, one day of business. Like what, what, what does that balance look like right now? The thing is, is, is I am not going to get on here and say that I have great balance or great work-life balance. What I will say is I work hard to integrate both football and what I'm wanting to accomplish and the, and the foundation that I'm trying to lay off the field. So I would say it's more integration versus balance. Um, and when I talk about integration, how do I come to an event like this how do I make sure that I'm eating right, sleeping right, 
um, and working out to make sure that I'm ready for training camp that's going to be happening in four weeks. Yes, I'm on a different time zone. Yes, I'm in a completely different atmosphere and environment. But how do I ensure that the main thing, which is winning on Sundays, starting, playing every game, how do I make sure that mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally I'm ready to do those things when the task is needed, but also putting things in place for when the game is over? And again, I go back to the, the word compounding. If you do these things and you're willing to do these things over time, it will get to a point where, man, you're doing a whole bunch of stuff. No, not really. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing it over and over and over and over. The same thing we talk about in the locker room. You know, you were in Cleveland. You were, you were, you were there Callahan. Were you there with Callahan? No, I was there. Miss Callahan. Miss Callahan. What, 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 what system you grew up in? That was, that was West Coast. I was with Hugh Jackson. That was true West Coast. West Coast. So two jet, three jet. Two jet. Cool. You run two jet on the first day of training camp. The last play of the season, you're going to probably run running two jet. You're running the same exact play. It's just it's been compounded over time. And I know we shouldn't be talking football language, but I mean, it's, but conceptually, yeah. it's the same thing. And that's, that's happening over and over and over. And the same thing happens in business. You're just continuing to build on the same type of relationships. The reason you're here, because you've built on the same type of relationships year over year. So I, and I officially got my, my cleats hung up. So I'm, a, I'm able to start to say some of the things I've been trying to hold back for a while, but there, there was a pe- there was a part of that where that's where I, I, I I don't want to say I question my love. I love the game. I, I love the game. I love the game. I love the strategy. I love nothing more than playing against Minnesota with seven up, and you got to figure out how the hell you're going to block both edges and two guys up the middle, and and you know figure out if you can get a tell from a corner and they're holding as long as they can, or safety. You know Harrison's back there holding for forever. So like I I love that. You know that 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 strategy that coming in on Wednesday on you know Blitz Day and figuring that out was awesome. I couldn't stand. I'll call it what it is, training camp, day one of training camp. I couldn't stand throwing a stick route over and over and over again. I couldn't stand going up there and and, and, and calling two jet and, you know, re re mic, you know, like that. I just it it became really repetitive. And and I and I guess the the for someone who is as as intellectual as you are, like I'm I, I and I will add some context. Aaron, you know, I, when I was backing up Aaron Rodgers, he was the first person where I really saw that you can really be an intellect off the field and be great on the field. So then that kind of like unlocked, okay, like, wait, hold on. Maybe I, I don't have to make a decision, you know, one way or the other. Right. I'm just curious for you. Like, what what does that look like? Like, how how, how is it to show up every day? I'm in love with the mundane. I could do rock or crowd the footwork from, you know, sun up to sun down, and I would find joy in doing the same movement, yeah. you know, 10,000 times. However... I also enjoy, hey, what's another way to do it? What's a what's a more innov- innovative way to do it? What chapter are you at? Like, where, where, where are you at right now? You got this business stuff going on. Yeah. Said you you call this work. You're on your working right now. Yeah. You know, where, where, where are you? Are you are you, at the, are you at the start of a new chapter? End of an old chapter? You, kind of, I, you know, I'm one of those people that has these ongoing chapters. I don't I don't I try not to put a, a start date and an end date to them. Um, because I think about them in, in the, the in terms of their journey. It's not really a destination. So I'm continuing to go on this journey, and this just happens to be this part of life right now. You know, I'm, I'm still playing ball, so still enjoying that, that aspect of the game. The body is still feeling fairly well. Um, but this just happens to be a chapter in my life that's continuing to be ongoing. And like I said earlier, it's bleeding into each other, so it's more integrated than it was, you know, five years ago, than it was ten years ago. Um, so it's more inter- inter- integrated than it was, you know, many moons ago. The day that the, that we decided to hang up the cleats and we're getting in the, in the business, and we all, we call you back up saying, "Come, we had a great conversation." You know, Dan and I are, are, are we're, fr- we're free guys right now. We're trying to go start a business. What, what piece of the business are you taking? What, what, what are you operating on? From you all taking business from you all? No, it's like, what, what, what are you into? What are you in the business perspective? It's like, you an operator, big thinker? Oh, I'm, it's it's more str- uh, strategic thinking. That's where I spend a bulk of my time. Uh, it's access to capital. Um, so understanding the role of capital and how capital can help the business. Um, and it's more being a sounding board, you know, for the CEOs and for the executive team as they're building. Um, operations, I love being a part of the operations. I love being a follower. Give me the instructions and let me go work. Um, but I love the strategy and the overall vision of being able to help with the company as well. So I love not only being a part of the management, but I also love being 
you know, a follower as well and being able to execute on the vision as well. Do you, do you see yourself as an operator one day or do you, do you like being kind of, you know, seated at, the, at, a, at a lot of tables as an investor, as, a, as an advisor? Well, the thing is, is I think in some shape, form or fashion, we're operators in our own individual lives, you know, so we're, we're having to manage people. We have to manage a CPA, a financial advisor, uh, um, you know, your executive team, uh, your family. So you're operating in different modes that being able to institutionalize that is a little different. Is, is how does that look, in, you know, from an institutional standpoint of, of operating a company, understanding you have KPIs that you have to now meet, you have ODRs that you have to now meet. It's, it's all these different terms that you all use within the workforce. It's like, how do you start putting things in place to, to go there? And for me, those are the things that I'm working on and the skills that I'm working on. So doing executive leadership programs, doing, you know, board leadership programs to understand how to make sure I have those technical competencies to be able to go into a company and understand what it's like actually do the operation side because I, I get the investor side that's being passive or being active or taking an equity stake I get that side but it's how do you really understand those nuts and bolts um, of being able to drive value from different departments how do you drive value if you were head of engineering how do you drive value if you're the head of a product you know how do you drive value if you were the, the director of finance you know if you're the chief revenue officer how do you drive value in that particular regard and spending time with other operators in that particular fashion and I think what the game of football does is it gives you access to those types of folks um, to be able to have dialogue and conversation in that regard. In sports, oftentimes, you know, as a player, you hear the term, it's just business. You get cut, you traded, you blow a knee, tough luck, whatever. It's just business. It's said a lot. But in the business world, for some reason, it's not said as much. How have you, like, how do you see those two worlds? Like, what's just business? Is it all just business? It's, it's very cutthroat. It's not, it's not much different. You know, if you're not doing your job as a CEO or uh, as a CFO, they'll find somebody else. Yeah. I think the, the thing about the NFL is it's so brutal and it's so fast and it's so um, barbaric in some senses. It's times the guy that cuts guys, I call him the Grim Reaper. And whoever the Reaper is on the team, I'm like, who are you reaping today? Like, cause that, that's literally all they're doing all day. So they're, they're reaping, they're, they're cutting somebody's life, not life, but their, their ability to earn income with this particular profession, what, for, for whatever reason, but that person wasn't doing a job and they had to go find somebody else within business. If you're not doing a job, they go find somebody else. So when you're on the board and you're on the flip side, you're yeah. in the reaper position, and some there's, senses. there's a way on you or you just just business in the well, same way. I mean, what's, what's different than, than, than a team not wanting you anymore? Yeah. When they let you go or they let you sign somewhere else, apparently they didn't like you enough. They didn't love you. You know, if a board isn't doing this job, they get sued. So I'd rather be cut than be sued. Yeah. You know, so it's, it, the board comes with its own particular issues. You know, the CEO and, and, and the, the, suite, the C-suite come with their, the, the, those particular consequences. So I wouldn't say it's an either or. It's this and, like, the way football is, is ran and the way a war room is ran. You're a big and guy. Yeah. You like and. Yes, yeah. and. I'm not an either or. Yeah. yeah. I'm very, very yeah. hybrid. I, I don't, don't, yeah. Business yes. Don't, 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 talk, don't talk about what we can't do. Let's yeah. talk about the solution and, and how do we get it done. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting. I was, I was on the phone with my, one of my executives yesterday. She's like, yo, but I can't find a car service here. I'm like, well, have you tried this? Well, I don't think, it, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk about what you think. Yeah. Let's talk about finding a solution to the conversation. I talk about my wife. I talk about my kids. Oh, dad, I can't do that. Yeah. No, let's talk about the solution. Again, like we were talking about earlier, I came in as a seven-round pick, so I take that mindset of I just have to find a way to get it done. Yeah. I have to find a way to, to, to make it work. I have to find a way to debunk that stereotype. I have to find a way to, to, to create or, or discredit some of the, the norms and stereotypes that they put on, on athletes. How do I find a way to do that? Don't talk about what we can do. Let's talk about what we can do and then find solutions to be able to build those things out. So with all this being said, are you playing business right now or are you doing business? Both. And. And. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the thing is, is, is playing business and doing business. I love the camaraderie and I love the passion and I love the the ability, you hear the energy outside. Like I enjoy, I enjoy that, that's playing business. I love the energy that comes with business. 
And then I love the, the aspect of doing business. I love at the end of the night, I got my business cards. I done handed them out. I done got some business cards. I done scanned some, 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 uh, some WhatsApps and LinkedIn's. I enjoyed the doing of making sure that I'm following up uh, and making sure that I'm staying top of mind in individuals' minds as they get ready to leave, you know, France and, and head back to their prospective areas. So I love playing the energy that comes with the business. And I also love the doing of the business, the mundane tasks that sometimes get lost in the shuffle just due to the, the, the high frequency of life. Appreciate you, man. This has been great. This has been great. I'm excited to circle back. Hey, anytime. I'm excited to see this business in five years, man. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. Be great. Thanks for listening to Playing Business. As you know, Dan and I value good discourse and perspective. So let us know what you agree with, disagree with, or what you'd like to hear in a future episode. Always appreciate a rating or a review, and be sure to subscribe. Thanks to the On Discourse and Audio Up team for the production of the podcast, and see you in the next episode.